Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Fury B Dinosaur Q95. Now this is Gearbest's answer, I guess, to the Ishin Lizard, which I have got here. As you can see, it's a very similar design and idea but this one is actually a combination of the awesome Q95 and the Lizard in that we have got these feet on here and they are actually removable and this is something that this has got over the Lizard you are given these prop protectors which is something I always thought the Lizard could have done with and the idea is that you just undo these screws here from the motor, put those on, and then you have an indoor model. So that's something that's a bit different. There are, however, some odd design choices with this one. But before I get onto that, let's talk about these specifications. So the motors are 1104 6000 kV motors so this model is designed to use a 2 or 3 s battery but with these being a lower kV motor than usual I would say go straight for the 3 cell battery with this one so it actually doesn't come with a battery unlike the lizard so I'm going to be using this nanotech 450 milliamp high C rated battery it's actually getting a little bit old now but you'll notice another difference is we're using a JST connector here whereas the lizard is using an XT30 it's better for current so that we don't get any brownouts or anything like that so I'll have to see if that is an issue with this one so then we have got the gem fan propellers these are the 2035 propellers against the five blade propeller on the lizard and you are given two spare sets of those but in blue so these propellers actually are attached out of the box and it fits in the box nicely with the propellers on which I'm always a fan of then on the back here we've got a LED board which is connected to the DIN it's just set to flash we've also got a low voltage beeper here as for the ESCs, they are a 4-in-1 and they are 20 amp flash with BL Halley S and they support D-Shot 600 which is good. Then the flight control, and now this is another interesting choice, it's the Omnibus F3 with a built-in on-screen display but the on-screen display is not connected up to the camera and this is why I think it's a really strange choice so the camera and I'll talk more about that in a bit but we have this button on the top there and a long press allows you to select between 25 milliwatt 100 milliwatt and 200 milliwatt and you get three lines across that little indicator on the back there so three lines is 200 milliwatt two lines is 100 and one line is 25 milliwatt it's a 40 channel VTX that's built into it there and before I get onto the camera yeah we have a receiver with this one as well so it's actually a pretty cheap model and it comes with the XM Plus which is a receiver that I really like so I'm going to be connecting this up to my Tyrannus here now you'll notice the front of my camera here has got a load of glue on it and it's not a good start because I plugged it in and this started to heat up so it gets very hot and the lens came off and just completely moved forward and that is including the mounting as well so yeah I don't think this is a very good camera to be honest and the fact that it doesn't have its video in split so we can't use the on-screen display as well yeah I'm not a big fan of that and it was really tricky to glue this back in. I don't think I've glued it back in completely straight. The lens moves as well, so it goes out of focus. 
And another interesting choice with the camera is the antenna. So the original pictures that I saw of this had a cloverleaf antenna, just like the Lizard, which I prefer because we've got this protector up here. So in a crash, the antenna wouldn't get bent. But they've decided to go for a whip, so all of this is a waste, really, of weight. And actually, if you wanted to stick with this camera, there's these two screws here. You can actually remove this and you could save a bit of weight. Speaking of the weight, it weighs 63 grams without a battery, which is actually lighter than the Lizard. The Lizard weighs 66 grams without a battery. And one thing that I do like with this one over the Lizard is the battery strap. So this one's a little bit thicker. This one, yeah, it's not that great. But you can see it's using these same standoffs here to keep the battery flat. So I think it's fair to say that it's a copy of this one for sure. One thing that might interest you about this model though is how wide this camera is. If you look at the original Lizard here, quite narrow. And if you wanted to upgrade the camera to, say, put a Micro Swift in, you can't. It's too narrow. But, because we have this bigger camera here, the Swift Micro actually fits in there. So, I think with all the downfalls of this camera here, that's something that I would do with this model is stick a Micro Swift in there, tap into the on-screen display, because why not? And then get one of those TX200 VTXs, and I think you'd have a superb model. And of course, though, you add in, what, you know, 22 pounds on the top of it for one of these cameras, and then another 15 pounds for a better VTX so you know then you're probably getting closer to the price of the Lizard however I will say that if you stick one of these cameras on here and a better VTX then the quality is going to be much better than the Lizard as well so as for the setup absolutely nothing was set up in beta flight so as flash with the stock version of 3.17 there were no modes or anything like that even the uart wasn't selected for the receiver and it was set to ppm so i had to change that to s bus and i also had to yeah switch the uart on there it was set up as aetr my tyrannus is set up for tar so i had to change that i changed the super 8 to 0.8 i give it very similar pids to the lizard because yeah those worked quite well so yeah i set the quadcopter up to arm on the orcs one and then on the orcs two I had angle, acro, acro and air, and then on the Orcs 348 loss model alarm. I also reduced the warning voltage to about 2.9 as well, otherwise the beeper goes off too early with these smaller batteries. And to change the channels, of course, it's a short press to go through the eight individual channels, and then a couple second press to go through the different bands. Okay, so before I check out the dinosaur, I want to fly the lizard so that I can see what the difference is. I think that's fair to compare them, but which one's going to take off? Probably the one with the LEDs on. Okay, let's just see the punch. Spitting a rain here, which isn't ideal. There you go, this is really just to see the punch of the lizard. Now the lizard has got these five blade propellers on it. So that might give it more punch, but we shall see. Oh, I do like the lizard though, I have to say. Right, I think that'll do it. Okay, now it's time for the Q95. Let's see what this one is like. Do you know what? I think it might have a little bit more, you know. 
very similar though, I have to say. Yeah, very similar indeed, actually. I think this one might just have it. That could be, again, down to the props. But there's very little in it. So I'm running very similar pids here on both of these. My uh, lizard pids actually seem to be quite popular. I think a lot of people like them. I'd have spent more time on them if I'd have known that. <laughs> but, you know, good starting point, I guess. Well, this is going nice so far. Yeah. I have to say, flying-wise, I like it. Not hearing any vibrations at the top of the throttle. How it is consistent. So yeah. It flies nice. Just needs a few of those things tweaking, like the on-screen display enabling, just tap into the camera or use a different camera. I might put the Micro Swift on this with a TX200 VTX. That'd be really nice, wouldn't it? Doesn't seem to be drawing too many amps. I'm not hearing the beeper go off. Loads of power and not so antisocial. Usually means a good flyer. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's come in for a landing. So the lens mounting falling off the camera out of the box was a early indication that this isn't a very good camera at all. We've got lines all over the screen, we've got dark patches in the corners, the dynamic range isn't very good. I don't think the lens glued on straight because there's a sort of curving at the top of the screen. And it's actually raining pretty bad here and I wanted to do another flight just to show off the camera, but re I don't think it would have been worth it. The camera needs replacing on this model. To me, it's just not up to scratch whatsoever. There is some good positive things about this model though. I think it flew better than the Lizard, and I'll put my PIDs over here, because I got a pretty good PID tune out of it. I think if you replace the camera on this with a Swift, then it would be fantastic. But out of the box, I think the Lizard is a better deal, so if that's what you're after, go for the Lizard. But if you're looking for a model that's sort of almost ready to fly, but you want to add a Micro Swift to it, then actually this one's pretty good because we've got an on-screen display chip on there as well. And that would have been a much better model, I think, if they'd have done that and just upped the price, I'd have paid for it but out of the box yeah this one no good so yeah I'm getting covered in rain here but yeah I think it gives an idea of what the picture quality is like through the camera and I don't think it's very good there's not a lot of break up there mine this was on the 100 milliwatt setting and maybe I got a dud camera I don't know but as soon as I plugged in the battery I got lines all over the screen and yeah it sort of interacts with the bad dynamic range of the camera and it's quite a unenjoyable flight so there you go that is my review of the Fury B Q95 dinosaur it's not a dinosaur at all but it does need a little bit of work for it to become a top contender so as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers